Hello, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. This is JB. And I'm Chandler, and this is the Unbiased Hard Take. And on today's Unbiased Hard Take, topic one, NFL season is approaching us. There is football this week. Football, 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 football. Preseason, however, we'll take it. So today, topic one, we are going to go down the line on NFC teams that we think are going to make the playoffs. Now, mind you, there are seven teams, four division winners, three wild card. So, JB, I'm going to throw the table over to you. You give me going from one to seven in that order of ranking division winners and then your wild card teams that you think will make the playoffs this coming season. Ooh. For me, starting at number one, for the NFC, or yeah. we're probably going to go back yeah, again. Right, yeah. We're going to go back. Philadelphia is going to be number one. Okay. Just because of Jalen Hurts is, you know, Jalen Hurts, he's he's an elite quarterback. We, we've seen it through a few years now, and he, he came up dramatically. Um, oh, yeah putting up that off with that offense. And even though they lost their best guard to the Pittsburgh Steelers, thank you. Um, but even though if they, we lost, they lost them, him, it's there. There's, I think still, they're still going to be a number one, even though they have the toughest, um, uh, schedule this season, but I still believe that they're going to be number one. Okay. And for my number two, San Francisco 49ers. Okay, I that's a, that's a pretty good pick as well. I think okay. even even though they still do not have or have it set mind as a quarterback, because we don't know if Trey Lance is going to be the quarterback or Brock Purdy is going to be the quarterback. We we still they still haven't came up to saying here here's our QB one. But with either which I which I've read and seen. That everyone's saying that Trey Lance has been doing um, has a phenomenal recovery. Um, he's doing a fantastic um, spot or job, and in the training camp, and Brock Purdy has not um, dressed up yet. So we we don't know. So Trey Lance might come back to QB one until uh, Brock Purdy um, comes back healthy from that injury from in the playoffs. Um, but I still believe. San Francisco because they have that amazing defense oh, yeah. and a a stunning offense. Even though without a QB, they still have Debo, uh, Christian McCaffrey, and a, probably one of the second or third best offensive line in the NFC. So we're putting San Francisco yeah. at number two. Okay. And at number three, I think we're getting ready to hit the NFC North. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking. We'll see. Detroit Lions. It's my number three. They had they had so um so much good changes. Uh, pretty good draft picks. Um, just anything in general that of what they missed last season, they improved this season. I could see um, that. And with Dan Campbell as their head coach. He's an aspiring. He's, um, I, th- I feel like he he stepped up to the plate hard, and he's a former player. And yes, and he is a former player, but he has passion for the game, and that's what you yes. need as a head coach. You ha- you need passion. Um, yeah. So Andy and Campbell is the job for that because he came, he brought the Lions to a a losing seasons multiple years. And then all of a sudden he came back and almost to the playoffs. I know. Twice. Twice. I know. They eliminated us. Yep. So Detroit Lions number three. Now we go to the dumpster fire. <laughs> the NFC South. Ew. Hmm. Is this in the box? Yeah, I don't know about the. No, no, Tam- Tampa Bay is is not. No, they were no. bad last year with Tom Brady. No, because I'm, I'm trying to think of, like. Yeah, 
Yeah, Tam- Tampa Bay's no. I, I, I was thinking really hard of what, what they did or what they did during the offseason, and they did absolutely nothing. Their their defense got worse. Um, their offense stayed the same without a an elite quarterback, even though Baker Mayfield is still, in my opinion, a really good quarterback. Um, he's just yeah. had injuries and, and all that that screwed him over. But I still think he is a really good he, – he can give you a winning season, but not a – uh, playoff uh, push, in my opinion, but he'll give you a good, uh, good season. Um, along with the NFC South, none of these teams actually really stick out to me. I mean, they yes, don't. Atlanta Fal- the Atlanta Falcons has actually had, um, you know they they got a few offense offensive um threats. They got their new uh, rookie running back. Uh, Robinson, uh, Drake London's looking good in the um, in training camp, and their defense is actually looking really good. Uh, it's, it's it's either between the Saints and the Falcons. You know what? I'm going with the Saints. I'm going with the Saints okay. on this one. I think that's a good bet too because they got Camara, they got Chris Olave, Derek yep. Carr now. Yep, Derek Carr. So we, we, we can see um, how Derek Carr is with a uh, new, um, whole new team, whole different um, atmosphere, different coaching yes. staff, um, different coaching in general, because the Raiders have completely different coaching techniques than the Saints coaching oh, staff. Yeah, they're, a, they're a dumpster fire. Yeah. Um, now we got the wild card. This is the fun part. Yeah. You know what? Packers. I'm putting in Packers at uh, on the wild card. At five? Yep. Really? Mm-hmm. At five? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Even, even though with fan. okay, even though with a um a new quarterback, even though he has been with in the system for many years now, um, right. it's go- it's going to be a rough start, uh, beginning of the of a few games. But their offense is actually going to start clicking. Um, every, every, their defense is actually, their defense has gotten somewhat, just a, a little bit um, improvement. Um, but with the Packers, I'll put them at number five. But it's okay, going to it's going to be a rough start. It's going to be a rough start. It probably could like take them about four or five weeks to actually get the ball rolling. Okay, but. It, they're going to be in the water card. Okay. As a Packer fan, you'll see my list later, but I'm impressed with that because I don't have them quite that high. Yeah. Well, with the, in a, the NFC is a whole dumpster fire. And it's not really a lot of teams that stick out. you got yeah, Philly and San Francisco. Yeah. That's really it as far as your elite teams. Everything after that sort of Dallas Cowboys. They'll, they'll get in. They'll yeah, they're they're again that they're they're my number six team. They're they're gonna be a wild card. Yeah. Um even with they their are. uh midget running back that's coming into in the league. Um I don't even remember his name. They got but, Pollard still, so yeah, they, they have Pollard, but I don't know if it, you've seen all of the uh stuff that's went through on well, it's called it x now but on twitter and i don't know if you there's a, like very x. little yeah uh elon Musk changed their the twitter to x is it literally just an x like yeah just an x i bet that took hours to figure out well when when he we <laughs> got now, now you're gonna talk and get me into in a whole different Told we're we're, we're not even going to talk about it. new Twitter is called X now. Okay, that's all that's I'm going to say. I'm not I'm not putting into any why Elon Musk once you know likes the letter X. I don't know. Now, we could talk now. Him and Zuckerberg fight. That is technically a sports related event. So it is. <laughs> it is billion dollar companies that box it out, and that's going to be that'd be hilarious. Anyways. <sighs> Dallas at six, huh? Okay. Yeah, Dallas at six. Um, because they, they have just an elite defense, um, and then plus they have C.D. Lamb, uh, Tony Pollard. Uh, but the only thing, the reason why they're going to be in the wild card is Dak Prescott. 
yes, he is a fantasy beast, but he is coming off the injury, even though we've seen that he did okay in that sort of sense. But but um but it, it's all it's all gonna rely on Dak Prescott and his uh, decision decision making. There oh, we yeah. go. Yeah. Um because his his decision making is not good. It definitely wasn't last year. No. And that was actually one of his first years with um uh, double digit interceptions. Mm-hmm. So that kind of surprised me a little. We'll see what he does this year. And people forget Cooper Rush came in there and looked good himself. So Yeah. Yeah, well I just sh- think they should have just stayed that way. But that's my really? opinion. Oh, I, I remember I remember oh yeah. They paid him too much money, Dak, to sit on the bench though. Mm-hmm. That's the reality. They do they paid him too much money. Let's see. And my and last number one. Seven. Number seven. It's between the New York Giants or the Rams. Really? The Ra- oh, really? Mm-hmm. I think the Rams roster is just yeah, the Ra- not there. Well, yeah. But, I mean, if you no. if you think about anybody else, I mean, Arizona Cardinals, dumpster fire. Seattle Seahawks, they, all they have is DK Metcalf. And they brought back Bobby Wagner. He's not in his prime anymore. Uh, no. I mean, you got Minnesota Vikings. But, I mean, they only have one threat, and that's Justin Jefferson. And they're gonna, he's going to get double, triple teamed, and Kirk Cousins does not know what to do because he lost Dalvin Cook. Okay. Uh, Bears, we no. <laughs> just, just, just no. If Justin Fields the quarter is a quarterback, no. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's, it's going to be. I'm going to be watch, looking at the Bears during the regular season a lot more than what I'm, you know, used to. Used to, but I want to see how Justin Fields um, deals with him and DJ Moore and their. Upgraded offense is what hopefully that he has more time. We'll, we'll, we'll see how we'll see how that dumpster fire goes by. Because truly, Jackson Fields, this is a year he has to produce. This is year three. If mm-hmm. he does not produce, he is on the hot seat. I would argue he's on the hot seat right now. Oh, yeah. He's, in, he's on the hot seat right now. He's it's either make it or break it. Oh, to absolutely. Me. Absolutely. It it is a make it break it, and if not, he's gonna be just like uh, Demarcus Russell, or a back a backup quarterback, right? Mm-hmm. Backup quarterback, yeah. and then he's just gonna be just no one wants him, and then it's just out of here. That's it. Yep. See ya. Or he can so trans or or he can um, transition into being a running back. Who knows? I mean, players have done it. Yep. Cordell Been Stewart done. did. Terrell Pryor did. He Terrell was Pryor. Explosive. Oh, yeah, he yeah, was so you, an explosive. It's been done. Yep. But yeah, back to my last pick. But, yeah, Buccaneers, no. Um, they had no success during the offseason. Um, their their drafts was not good. Um, Carolina, even though they got a new quarterback, um, they don't have that much weapons particularly. I don't like predicting rookie quarterbacks to make the playoffs. Not my yeah. thing. Um, Falcons. Um, it's depending on what quarterback they have. Uh, defense looks okay. It sucked last year, but it's, uh, I've, I've seen on the training camp episodes that they are talking that it has improved. Yeah. So yeah, we'll we'll see see how that goes. The Washington Commanders. Take um, no. Just no. Well, even though they got a new owner now, they got a new owner. And they're talking they to bring him back the old Washington team. The Redskins or the football team? The Redskins. Really? Yep. 
that's i mean that i mean that's that's what i've read but i don't know if that's all you know set in stone but there's there was over i think he's saying over thirteen thousand signing uh petitions for uh bringing back the redskins now we'll see what the nfl does with that if they turn it in yeah but i mean okay you're saying rams or giants okay (sighs) giants giants yep yeah they did win a playoff game last year. People forget that they did. Mm-hmm. They did. All thanks to Saquon Barkley. But it also, that's what I'm going to... They're going to be the last team to actually... And if Saquon is going to ball out and just like either get my money or or I'm leaving type deal, even though he did sign a, a one-year deal, but it's basically just the same as you know, a franchise tag, basically. So we'll, and, and it pretty much is. Yeah. It doesn't really make any sense why he signed that. It's pretty much the exact same as the franchise tag. Yeah. And probably put a, probably just like a few grand and more. Probably. I don't know. I th- all right. It seemed almost, it was almost virtually the same contract, slightly more. Yeah. And I, well, yeah. maybe, maybe he did it just because during it, just in case if in the middle of the season, he could just, leave and not be on a franchise tag right so that, and that's, that's uh, yeah and that's a possibility so that truly is but yeah okay. i'm i'm picking the the giants if um it depends on what saquon does um if he comes out rushes over a thousand yards a season or he's just gonna you know barely do anything so we'll right. we'll, we'll see what happens okay. Okay. But yeah, that's right. that's my list. Okay. okay. That's a safe list. We have some differences, though. We do. And we'll start with number one, actually. I actually have the Niners at number one. Here's why. Ooh. Okay. The Eagles have the sixth hardest schedule. I firmly believe the Niners, I picked them to go to the Super Bowl last year. Mm-hmm. Before the season started, I firmly believe, had they had a quarterback at all, to play in the NFC Championship game, they would have won that game. Mm-hmm. I think they have a better roster than Philadelphia from top to bottom. I think Brock Purdy is the franchise quarterback. I mean, he got into the NFC title game. You got McCaffrey, top running back in the league. You got Debo Samuel. You have Kyle Shanahan, who's an outstanding coach. You have a good structure, good organization, and an elite defense. I think so long as they don't go through 100 quarterbacks again this season like they did last year, my God. They had, what, three get hurt? Mm-hmm. Man, they were on the Mr. Irrelevant at one point, and they st- still made it all the way to where they did. So yep. I have a hard time not putting them at one because of that reason. I just And their division is not the toughest. Yes, you have Seattle, but beyond that, you have the Rams, who have a top-10 difficult schedule as well. How healthy staff are going to be, how healthy is Cooper Cup going to be. I'll get into him later. Their defense was atrocious. They have no draft picks at all because they traded them all for that ring. So mm-hmm. I just have a hard time with them. And then you got the Cardinals, who are just truly a dumpster fire. So they have an easier division. That's number one. Right. Number two, the Philadelphia Eagles. Jalen Hurts would have, been, would have been the league MVP had he not got hurt later in the year. He would have been. Why we're not talking about him as an elite quarterback is beyond me. He is an elite quarterback. He is a top quarterback in the NFL. He is. Mm-hmm. He's just a dual threat. And to think, two years, he's, he made the playoffs the last two years. To the Super Bowl, and the year before that, they lost in the wild card to Tampa Bay. Mm-hmm. Yep, so that's when... number two. Yep. And they have A.J. Brown. They have Devontae Smith. They have, they have a good roster around them. They have a good running game. So Philadelphia in a weak NFC, number two. Number three. I go back and forth on this sometimes. I agree with you, the Detroit Lions. Part of me doesn't want to pick the Lions because the Lions are the Lions. They'll find a way to blow it. It's like the, like the NFC version of the Browns, a laughing stock. Mm-hmm. So part of me doesn't want to put my stock in Detroit because I know how much of a failure they've been in the past. And they really have the same team. But Jared Goff has proved to be a decent quarterback. My God, he almost won a Super Bowl. Right. They have Amara St. Brown. They have an outstanding coach in Dan Campbell. Their defense is, is atrocious uh, last year to a point. So they'll, they'll need to improve that. 
But I think in a division with without Aaron Rodgers, with the Bears, who were the worst team in the league last year, and the Vikings, who were great last year but had a negative point differential, I just think the Lions are probably the good pick at three. And four, down to the dumpster fire at the South, the Saints. Because really... Tampa Bay had a losing record with Tom Brady last year. How do you think they want to do with Baker Mayfield? Here he got no. You had a losing record with the GOAT, the greatest of all time, and now you have Baker Mayfield. Mm-hmm. Good, luck, good luck with that. The Panthers, yeah, up and coming, but how much stock do you want to put into a rookie quarterback? Right. The Falcons have a good roster. Taylor Heineke, Desmond Ritter, eh, they need a quarterback. The Saints. Alvin Kamara, so long as he can play. I'm under the impression now he will because nothing's been come out. But we've been speculating his legal drama. This is the second year in a row now. Um, so you have Alvin Kamara. You do have uh, Chris Olave. Michael Thomas is still part of the team. You have, Derek, you have Derek Carr. So I think the Saints just have the best talent in that division. They had a really good defense last year with a defensive head coach. So the defense is good. They've improved their quarterback situation. They do still have Taysom Hill who is a playmaker as well. So I think the Saints are the good pick at the division there. I think they'll finish with an 8-9, 9-8 nine, nine and eight record, somewhere in that, that range, I would say. Right. Now, your wild card team. This is where the NFC gets a little bit more difficult. Number five, the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. You do have Micah Parsons on defense. Mike McCarthy gets a lot of hate. People forget Mike McCarthy is a Super Bowl champion. He's made the playoffs multiple times with Dallas, multiple times with the Green Bay. So he's a better coach than people think. Dak Prescott is a top five NFC quarterback. They have Tony Pollard so long as he can be healthy, and then you have CeeDee Lamb. America's team, which the Packers are America's team. I would debate anyone with that all day long. But America's team, I'm going to go with number five. They're too talented, in my opinion, not to make it. True. Number six. True. This is where things get a little more difficult. Because, again, the NFC is sort of a dumpster fire. It's not nearly mm-hmm. as good as the... AFC. No, yeah, not nearly. I actually am going to say the Giants won't make the playoffs. Oh. They have, they have the okay. most difficult schedule in the league. Okay. They were a wild card team last year with... I mean, you're in the same division as the Eagles with Jalen Hurts and the Cowboys with Dak Prescott, and you just signed Daniel Jones all that money. Saquon's unhappy. He's had injury history in the past, so it's not – he's been more unhealthy than healthy the last four or five years. Even though he came back and he did brought up that 1,000-yard uh, season. And he did. He's an elite running back, but can he stay healthy? That's been a question mark in previous seasons before that. Daniel Jones without Saquon is just a dumpster fire. They play in a hard division. I just have a hard time thinking they're going to make the playoffs. And the Commanders really aren't a horrible team. They're not the worst team in the league. So they don't really play in an easy division. Right. So number six, I'm going Seattle. I am. People thought they would be one of the worst teams in the league. Last. People making fun of them for the Russell Wilson trade. Genuinely thinking they wouldn't win a single game or two last year. Oh, they're in the playoffs. And then Russell Wilson leaves, and then he automatically sucks. But Geno Smith comes in, who had sucked all of his career, and is automatically a Pro Bowl quarterback. That tells me Seattle is doing something. They are. They are doing something there. They have a good organization, good work ethic. They must have a really good ran organization. And they do have a, de- they have a really good defense and elite coach. I mean... I just have a hard time not putting Seattle back in there so long as Geno can at least continue to be a average quarterback, a good quarterback. I have a hard time thinking in the NFC they won't make it. Yeah, because who knows that he might just be a, a one-hit wonder. Yes. Because like, like you said, he's he sucked for his whole, majority of his career. He jumped over multiple teams, and yet now he had one tremendous uh season yes but is is he is he is he gonna capitalize on with the second season his second season here's what people don't realize here's what casual fans don't realize now there's film 
People mm-hmm. think NFL players just go to practice and play a little bit and then they go home. No, there's a lot of film studies, a lot of rehab, there's a lot of team meetings. Anyone who watches any sort of hard knocks knows the NFL never sleeps, truly. Even when it's the off season and the dark times, as we call it, the NFL is still operating team meetings, OTAs, mini camp, training camp, preseason. There's always something going on. Now there's tape on Geno Smith. So the defensive coordinators around the league are watching his tape. Mm-hmm. So they're going to make adjustments. Can he overcome that? That's the next question. Yep. Can he can, do it again? Type of deal. No, exactly what I said. Can he can he capitalize? Yes. And I, I think he will enough to at least get in the playoffs in a really bad NFC. And number seven. This is where it's hard for me. Because I have two picks. My heart tells me one. My brain says maybe go with the other. But then you look at what my heart says. Number seven, the Green Bay Packers. And I'm not being biased here because last year the Vikings had a negative point differential. I don't remember the exact stat, but them being one of the top two teams, they were one of the only teams in NFL history to do as well as they did with a negative point differential. Their defense was trash, Mm -hmm. straight trash. But then you look at the fact that they did lose Adam Thielen. They did lose Dalvin Cook like we've talked about. So I think they're going to take a little bit of a step back. And you look at Green Bay's roster. Green Bay's roster is a really good roster. Mm -hmm. You have Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon. In my opinion, that's the best running back duo in the NFL whole. The whole NFL. I don't think you can name a better running back duo than them two. Truly. Christian Watson showed really good promise last year. He had better stats than some of the leading rookie receivers in the later part of the year. It just took him that long to kind of get it going. And I'm looking at you, Aaron Rodgers, for not participating in mini camps and voluntary team activities with your rookie receivers who don't even know how to get across the goddamn building yet. They don't even know where the locker room is. And you're not there. Romeo Dobbs, same way. He had really good moments last year. Showed promise. And then they've drafted a bunch of receivers. They've drafted tight ends. So you have a rookie quarterback. Not a, a rookie quarterback, but... A first-time starter coming in, developing with these young receivers. Well, technically, he's not a first-time starter because he did start a few few games. A game. He started mm-hmm. one game. But he's a first-time starting quarterback probably in the league. Two. He probably started two games. I think it was only the Kansas City game. I know he played in the Philadelphia game, and he looked really good against the NFC champions. So you look at that. And their defense is outstanding. They have the best corner in the league, Jair Alexander. I'll say that. You have Kenny Clark up front. You have Darnell Savage, who actually celebrated his birthday recently. Happy birthday, Darnell Savage, who has shown promise. Eric Stokes, who has really shown promise in the past. You have Rasul Douglas. That's a really good corner trio. Mm-hmm. The only thing, and then the linebackers, you have Devontae Campbell, who he seems really motivated. He really does. Then you look at Van Ness, the rookie they drafted, who, from what I've seen, has looked good early in camp. Lucas Van Ness. And so they have an underachieving defense that should have done better last year. Looking at you, Joe Barry. Looking at you, Joe Mm -hmm. Barry. We're looking at you. Looking at you. You have a really talented defense. And you have to add Preston Smith and Rashawn Gary as your pass rusher so long as he can be healthy, with Lucas Van Ness in there as well. So their defense, they got a defense. They really do. So, and they have a, Matt LaFleur is a good coach. I wouldn't say he's an elite coach, but I would say he's at least a good coach. Mm-hmm. Jordan Love's been in that system. Green Bay has been one of the most stable organizations since the early 90s. They're not going to suck. The NFC is weak. I think if they were out in the AFC, there is no way in hell. No way. Zero percent chance. But I wouldn't. I think it's either going to be Green Bay, Minnesota, in that spot. I'm taking Green Bay. I think Jordan Love is going to at least be a good quarterback in the league. Okay. All right. So there, there you have it. A little bit of differences, but we're pretty much Just on. Just a little bit. We're on the same page pretty much. What was it? We pretty much had the same teams except flip the Seahawks for the Giants, wasn't it? Yeah. And we had them in different order. So we're pretty much... On the same page there. All right, moving on. Topic two. We have football season <laughs> this week. 
football season this week, we're going to go over the world of the AFC, and we're going to rank our top five quarterbacks going from one to five in the AFC. And, of course, the AFC is loaded with quarterback loaded. talent. So we're probably going to get a lot of hate for this one. I'm sure of it because yep. everyone's right. Yep. The Internet never never sleeps. So, JB, never fails. go ahead. Nope. Can't make them all happy. I've stopped trying. So, JB, go ahead and give me your top five quarterbacks going from one to five in the AFC. All right. So my number one is no other than Patrick Mahomes, obviously. Pretty granted, right? Yeah, pretty granted because with uh, – 66.3% uh, completion percentage. It has over f- almost 5,000 yards. I think it was just this season. No. Was it this season? He had almost. Mm, let me see. I know he's li- he was lighting it up. Pat Mahomes stats. Today, internet. Yeah, 5,250 yeah. yards. So he had over 5,000. Oh. Over 5,000 yards with uh, 41 touchdowns and 12 interceptions in just a regular season alone. And he was, he had he thrown no interceptions in the postseason um, and completing only se- only 72% of his uh, attempts. So that is really good out of 100 yes. and he only completed 72. And with, But it's only 703 yards, but that is really um, amazing with only averaging 234 uh, yards a game. So, I mean, that that is an amazing number. Right. I mean, I don't think no one else can actually, you know, top that, in, in my opinion. Oh, no, 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 no. He's easily the best quarterback in the league, even though I'm not a super big fan myself. Yeah, it's, I'm. It's I'm, not, I'm not a big fan myself, but I mean, you got you got to show greatness once. Oh, oh yeah. Once it comes down to it, especially what he did without Tyreek Hill. Yep, yeah, uh, that's that was my assumption uh, oh, last yeah. year. It's like, what is he going to do with Tyreek Hill? Because his his only uh, target was uh, Travis Kelsey. And you had a couple guys: Marquez Valdez, Scantling, Juju Smith Schuster. Eh, they're okay. Yep. They're okay. Yeah, they're they're okay, but I mean, he he made them look good, so he did. And that and that's and that is twice. what an elite quarterback does. He makes a makes good receivers look fantastic. Yes. So now we get to the not assumptions. Yep. Number two. Number two. I want to see know, what you say here. You know what? I'm gonna say Josh Allen. Okay. Josh Allen, number two. Um, even though he almost had, he had over four thousand uh, yards, um, completed sixty three percent of his uh, passing attempts, he went thirty five for fourteen last season. Uh, postseason is where he was not looking too good. Mm-hmm. Um, only had fifty nine point three percent of uh, completion percentage. Um, but yeah, it, it's. When it comes to postseason, I think that's where Josh Allen cannot get a grip on, you know, be his elite caliber. I agree. Um, because he had three touchdowns and three interceptions. So to me, that's yeah. even with having an amazing offense. Um, even though they. They are losing um, their star running back, uh, Naheem Hines. He had a career-ending injury and during the training camp. Season ending? Yeah, I do believe so. Season, okay. Yeah, I do believe it was season ending. Okay. But I could be wrong. Well, you said career ending. I'm like, wait well, yeah, I meant, I'm, I meant season. Okay, okay. I, I'm, I, was, I was looking at the word career on my screen, so that's, that's, that's probably why I said career. But yeah, a, a season, week. yeah, a season-ending injury during the training camp. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll see how how the running game is for uh, the Buffalo Bills. But I mean, you have an amazing receiving core. Um, you have uh, Corey Davis, Stephon Diggs. Um, I don't know who else will be on that 
team. But I mean, well, I think I'm right. I mean, yeah, the the two the two main ones, the the wide receiver duo, Corey Davis and uh, Stefan Diggs, th- those two are amazing, and, the, and Josh Allen makes them look fantastic as well. Yes. Okay. Um. So. That's a good pick. So. Josh Allen is my uh, number two. Trace. And number three for my AFC quarterbacks. Yeah, you know, we're going with Joe Seisty, Joe Burrow. Okay. You get ready to be nervous. I was going to blow a gasket if you didn't have Joe Burrow in the top three. But yeah, uh, Joe Burrow is my top three. Um, just the fact that he had he, for he has an ama- amazing career. Don't don't get me wrong, but oh yeah, he went to the Super Bowl as like what his second year. I think yeah, yeah. Se- his second year, he went to the Super Bowl. Yep, almost won. Yeah, and almost won, but. I mean, he ever since ever since he fell off his rookie year, or he had an injury, um, his rookie year. Um, ever since then, he's skyrocketed. I mean, he oh, yeah. he looked he he looked amazing. But even though this year he had a calf injury during the training camp, uh, well, while weeks. he was, yeah, so a few weeks. For a few weeks, but we'll we'll see how maintained that um, injury will pull out through the season. Um, but yeah, with, with that calf injury this year, I think it's gonna, he's going to be a little hurting because um, unless the the calf, the muscle that he strained or pulled, um, it's it's going to be it's going to be hard for him. Yeah. But we'll, we'll we'll see. But yeah, with the, his regular season of last year, he he um completion percentage at sixty eight point three, um almost over four thousand yards with four thousand four hundred seventy five uh yards per game is two hundred seventy nine with a total of thirteen touchdowns and twelve interceptions and passer rating was at a hundred point eight. So that is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. But yeah, po- the postseason for Joe Burrow, it's. I mean, it's no assumption. I mean, he's he's really good in the postseason. Um, it's just oh, yeah. the fact. It's just the fact of, you know, who he's facing because he he has to face. Now the Jets are a caliber team now since um, the star rookies are coming in and possibly there's talks that um, Dalvin Cook might be signing with the with the Jets as well. So that's going to be um, hard. Um, yeah. even I'm going to say this is going to be a non-biased answer, but the Steelers are, is now a, a threat. They, we've always been a threat to the Bengals. Um, oh, yeah. just, just because we, we did sign a, another linebacker, uh, Kawan, uh, Alexander, um, an ex jets linebacker. And he was a hard hitting, a linebacker, a great coverage linebacker too. Um, oh, yeah. We've had so much. We had an amazing draft. We had the best drafts in the whole um, the draft. Um, Kenny Pickett is looking good during training camp. Um, our defense is looking amazing. Um, okay. So there, there's so okay. there's t- so many teams out there that you know he has to face, and he's he's making it look easy. Yes, yes. But it, it's going to be it's it's going to be a rough season this year for him. You think so? Uh, it's not going to be that rough, uh, but it, it's it's going to be it's going to be kind of rough a, for him. A small step down, just eh, just a okay. very small one. Okay. Just just because of that uh, calf injury, because who knows? He might roll out again, and he he might pull it again. Who who knows? We, might, we yeah. who who knows about um you know muscle strains or muscle pulls? Because that those those muscles can pull again. Oh, absolutely. So who knows that that might happen. Um, but yeah. Okay. Number four on my Watch list. Four. You know what? 
This is where Excuse things me. aren't as clear. Lamar Jackson. Okay. I'm Lamar okay Jackson is my number four. I'm okay with that. Even though he did sit out the majority of this season, of last season. The end, at least. I don't think he was. He was. He could have played. He chose not to. Yeah, he he could have played, but he's he wanted his his money. But even though his linebacker got majority of the money, and he wasn't too happy about it, so he just you know decided to keep on sitting out. But with the stats that he did have of oh, last season, um, he had over two thousand uh yards, uh two thousand two hundred forty two. His completion percentage was at sixty two point three. And on the 17 touchdowns and seven interceptions with a QB of rating or a passer rating of 91.1. And with the receiver core that he did not have last season. That is amazing. OBJ now. Yeah. And now he has OBJ, but and the house had that rookie uh, Zay Flowers. So that's yep. that is uh, going to be a huge, um, huge uh second weapon for him oh yeah but okay who knows about um obj's um injuries um because even though he did not play last year because of his no one wanted him to deal with his injuries missed the playoffs and everything mm-hmm so that's we'll, my issue with him but he, you're right he is he, top five he yeah but I, I think, and, and plus Lamar is looking amazing during training camp. Like, um, the that whole uh, Ravens offense is looking amazing with uh, the rookies, a flowers. Um, their uh, Lamar and Zay is looking are, or is connecting really easily. Uh, same way with Odell. Well, I mean, it's it's Odell. He can he can make anybody look look good. And they and people forget they also. Um... Nelson Aguilar, if I remember correctly, they had him as well. Mm-hmm. So they they have they have better weapons now. Yeah, they have way better weapons now. But yeah, yeah, with that seventeen touchdowns and seven interceptions, I mean, with 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 what he had, it was it was amazing to watch. And number. Can he pick it? No. <laughs> no, that 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 would be me I saying to the computer and slap you. Yeah. Here. But no. Is it's gonna it's gonna come. It, it's gonna come. Kenny is is well, is gonna be gonna he, he's gonna get there. But for my oh, number let's five see if we have the same one here. Let's see. Number five. Justin Herbert. Real Herbert the Sherbert. Really? Okay. Okay, I thought he was disappointing last year, slightly. With with the stuff that he um, had uh, last year, I mean, with the with the other. Um, I mean, you're right. Keenan Allen was hurt. Yep. They did at least still make the playoffs, mm-hmm. which is the first time in his career. So, okay. Winning's more important than stats. I can see that. Okay. But yeah, with with it is a huge stepping um, stepping stone from the 2021 when he had 38 touchdowns and 15 interceptions. Um, even though this year he had 25 touchdowns and 10 interceptions. But this year they made the playoffs. The year he had but, 38, they did not. Yeah. So but you yeah, take the, that into for, account too. Yes. Winning, winning's what matters. But yes. But even though. He still completed 68.2% of his passing attempts, and he had a 93.2 uh, passer rating. Okay. And he almost had, he was probably a game shy of having 5,000 yards because he had 4,739 passing yards. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then with his, the one... Post or with the postseason and everything, he had twenty five forty three. Um, he completed only fifty eight uh, percent on that. We had two hundred seventy three, um, and he only had one touchdown that uh, that uh, playoff game. Okay. So okay, he's he 
even though yes even though i said before it is a huge uh down step of uh in 2021 but even though yes they did make the playoffs this year or last year mm -hmm. um even though i wish they would went out just a, one more to show how justin herbert can deal with the uh, round two of the playoffs but that that didn't happen for me they blew it they 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 blew it tremendously hard and they they had the chance, but they they blew it. They they okay. blew it so hard. But yeah, Justin Herbert. Even yes, even he has um okay. probably one of the best wide 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 blah 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 wide receiver duos in the AFC. And with those okay. two, with those two, if those two are healthy, Justin Herbert is going to have probably. Better a better season than than Lamar Jackson and uh, Joe Burrow this year. Okay, if they stay now, healthy. Now we got some differences on our list. This is going to get fun. I do see what you're saying because Keenan Allen was hurt a lot last year. That might mm -hmm. be why the stats declined. But then yep. again, they did make the playoffs. So. Yep. Now I agree with you. My list one. I'm not want to say much about Pat Mahomes. I think that's pretty much common sense. Two time Super Bowl champion, MVP Two -time last MVP. year. Two time right. Super Bowl MVP. I mean, he went out there with Tyreek Hill and made it look easy. Yep. In a really, really hard AFC playoffs was spectacular. He is the best quarterback in the NFL right now. I mm -hmm. don't really, I don't think need to go too much into that. So I'm not one of. But number two, Joe Burrow. I like Joe Ooh. Burrow more than Josh Allen. Here's why. So okay. you look at Josh Allen. You're all right. The last two years, his QBR is under 100, but the last two years, Burroughs is over 100. The last two years, Burrow has less interceptions in both seasons than Josh Allen did. He had Burrow 68 higher completion percentage. But what gets me is the playoffs. Last year, the Bills barely beat the Dolphins. Barely. And then Fair lost way. next week to Cincinnati, if I don't recall, to Joe Burrow. Mm -hmm. Joe Burrow's been to a Super Bowl. Josh Allen has not. They're both, now Josh Allen has been in the league five years. Joe Burrow, three. So Allen has played longer, but has accomplished less than Joe Burrow. Made a Super Bowl. Almost won it. And I like the, con I, I think Jamar Chase and T. Higgins is a better receiving core than what the Bills have. Yes, Stephon Diggs is great, but they don't have a second guy like T. Higgins. So I think that comes into play. Well, I, I do believe uh, Corey Davis is in that same um, caliber as uh, oh. T. Okay. Okay. That's why I'm taking Burrow, though. Is Okay. He's, just, he's been in the playoffs. He's been to a Super Bowl. Allen's never even been there. So I'm, this is a big year for Josh Allen. Speaking of Josh Allen, I had him at three. Okay. Now, again, I can't deny how good he is. 35 touchdowns, 14 picks. He before that, 36 and 15. He before that, 37 and 10. 29 before that. Before him, the Bills were irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And so long as they have Josh Allen, they have a chance. But his Super Bowl window and that tie AFC, he got to get it going. Or you, you're going to be like the next Dan Marino, man. You got to get that going. Because he's going to want big money eventually. They're going to give it to him to reserve rightfully. But then you're not going to be able to play your defensive players or your offensive linemen or a running back. So then your pieces around you are going to decline in the AFC. That's not a good thing. So this is a really big year for Josh Allen. I had him last year at two. Burrow has proven to me last year that he's better than Allen. In my book. Because of what he's accomplished in a shorter period of time. Now, okay. here's where things... We're going to start differentiating a little here. So four, Aaron Rodgers. Okay. So as a Packers fan, I've witnessed it for years with atrocious running games and atrocious defenses. So long as you have Aaron Rodgers on your team, you truly have a chance. Now, is he older than what he was? Yes. He, was a, he, he, was two, he won two MVPs back-to-back -back recently. He was the league MVP two years ago. Mm -hmm. You don't just fall off like that. And last year, he was not horrible. He really wasn't. We were still in playoff contention the last week of the season, and we had a horrible team. But we were still playing for a playoff spot. Had we won that game, we'd have been in there. 
And we might, and at that point, we might be having a whole different conversation right now. Because if Green Bay made the playoffs last year and beat Detroit in that final game, I don't think we'd have moved off from them. So Aaron Rodgers, you have Randall Cobb over there, Alan Lazard, some familiarity, familiarity, wow, the New York Packers is what I call them. I mean, and then, of course, you have Garrett Wilson, and you have an awesome defense. So I think they have the pieces to at least make a run. I'm worried because they have a brutal schedule and they have hard knocks. So I don't think as a team they'll make it. We'll get into that next week. But Rodgers, four. Yeah, I, I would honestly put Rodgers on my list. But for one, he hasn't. This is the first team that he's been a different team. Um, one with an AFC team. He is. It is a whole different ball game when it's from NFC to AFC, in my and opinion. So yeah. I, for me, I don't know how good Aaron Rodgers. Yes, even though yes, Aaron Rodgers is an elite quarterback. He makes right. everyone look good, just like Patrick Mahomes. But he's he getting to, he's getting to that age. He's he is. He yes, he accomplished so so much, but. Is, I just don't know how it's, how it's going to be with the Jets, honestly. And I don't either. Even though I'm, even though Nathaniel Hackett is back on the Jets, um, like you said, the New York Packers 2.0. Literally. Um, Tim Boyle's even there. He was Green Bay's backup quarterback for years, and he's even on the roster. Yep. God dang. Yeah. But, but yeah I'm I've, just not one to bet against A-Rod. Yeah, I, I just don't know how it how it's going to... How is going to be? Um, so that that's I why I did not have Aaron or Aaron Rodgers on my list. I agree. I'm just not willing to bet against him. now. And I, I'm not, I, and I'm not betting against him at all. It's just, it's just the fact that we don't know. How, I don't know. I don't know how he's going to react. I don't, I don't know if he's going to play. just like last year, where he's going to struggle, like almost to like mid season when he's actually going to. He's like, oh, well, I need to get this ball rolling. I need to get this young team to actually, you know, playoffs or whatever. And you're right. It's like but we, I like I, I don't know, man. I don't know. So I that, don't, that's I don't either. I'm but, I'm not betting against it, but I'll 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 be surprised if, um, actually I will not be surprised. I will actually I will be surprised if, if he does absolutely horrible. Anyways, and my thing, I'm just not one of, and I think you're absolutely right. I, I don't know how he's going to do. They have a hard schedule, hard knocks. He's not too happy about that. Mm-hmm. But I'm just, I don't know. He's accomplished so much. I feel like if I were to bet against him, it'd bite me in the butt. Yep. Now, number five. This is where I'm going to give an honorable mention because it's just hard. And I think Trevor Lawrence is my honorable mention. I think he could definitely jump who I have at five. Mm-hmm. But due to extended body of work, Lamar Jackson at number five. He's an MVP. He's made the playoffs multiple times. And yes. Unanimous one year. Yes. Yes. He's ran for a thousand yards multiple times. Been a Pro Bowl quarterback multiple times. He is a top five. I don't I don't think he had his teams back last year. I think he sold out and was more and more about Lamar than he was the actual team. So let's see if he can build that locker room back. Because as a leader, you gave up on the Ravens. You could have played. Let's be honest. He held out for money. I get it. True. I really, really do. I do. But how are you going to explain that in the locker room? That's my thing. But he is a top. He got his money. He is a top five quarterback. He's done it multiple seasons. Trevor Lawrence has only done it one season. Granted, his rookie season was Urban Meyer. So I don't want to. I don't. I don't think that counts. Right. I. I. So let's kind of look past that a little. We need to see Trevor Lawrence do it again. And the reason I have Lawrence over Herbert, I look at the playoff game last year. That's all I'll say. So number five, though, Lamar. He's an and MVP. plus uh, Calvin Ridley yeah. is back, and he is yes, Calvin he is. Ridley is looking amazing. Um, the Jaguars is probably going to be the number one in that division. But well, that's and, yeah. Oh yeah, that's a yeah. shitty division. Colts, Jags, Titans, Jag Colts. Sorry. Texans, Colts, Jags, Titans. Yeah, that's easy. Titans, yeah. maybe a little bit of competition, no. but the rest of them, eh. no, they they don't Speaking even know who their quarterback is. Calvin Ridley, our next topic. Now we're not going to spend as much time on the fantasy this week because we have a tribute we'd like to do. Um, so we're going to kind of I don't want to say hurry this topic, but we're going to cut that so we're able to do the tribute we would like to um, do at the end. Um, however, fantasy wide receivers. 
JB, if you could just go ahead and give me a synopsis of, I will do a little different this week because of that, a real quick breakdown of two receivers to draft, two not to draft. And I'll do the same real quick, and then we'll we'll get to the, the rest. All right. So my number one. Two draft. Two draft. Two draft is Jamar Chase. Okay, yeah. I mean, there, there's there's no question about it. Uh, Jamar Chase with Joe Burrow and that that connection when they were in LSU, um, is is transferred over to the uh, NFL and it's it's gone ten times more better oh, yeah. than than what what it is. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and my next one to choose is. He's a very sleeper. He hasn't played in in multiple seasons. He's come come back and he's come back with vengeance. Calvin Ridley. Oh, you stole mine. I'll still yep. do mine anyway. Yeah. But yeah. Well, I mean, you could say it too. I will. But but yeah, with Calvin Ridley finally coming back, um, his he hasn't done no betting ever since he got caught. Um, so that's. That that is a that is, that is a plus for him. He's got to be suspended again. I don't know. I don't know if you read that uh, article about Calvin Ridley and his uh, downfall. A little, yeah. I've I've read it all, and it was it was a really amazing read. You should you guys should read it. Um, really amazing. A uh, really good backstory of uh, Calvin Ridley's sad sad track. It was a sad uh, backstory. But yeah, Calvin Ridley, he's coming back and he's on the training camps. His route running is phenomenal. Oh, it yeah. is quick and he's you see rookies doing doing the doing the cutting and or like the steps and everything. He's like, no, you just need one hard cut and go. Don't need to right. shuffle. No, that that takes forever. That takes too long. One cut, go. That's what that's what Calvin Ridley is doing, and he's oh, look yeah. he's looking like he's been in the league for years, and he yes. has and he hasn't played in what three over, over a year yeah over a year. I thought he, he was, was like in, no, all just all last year. Oh, I thought it was had a few years, but yeah. Now to our do not draft to me we do to- not draft. Everyone's gonna have hate. Do not draft Justin Jefferson. He is the only target for the Minnesota Vikings. He's the only target. What is and that when the defense coordinator sees that he is the only target, he the, he's going to be double teamed, triple teamed every game. Yeah. And there and Kirk and when and Kirk is not the best with the decision making, he will throw it up to him regardless. So. Uh-huh. Justin Jefferson, that. do not draft him. Who knows? I'm, it might, well, got, I might be eating my own words, but do not draft uh, Justin Jefferson. Well, you got number two. And at number two. Hmm. Dang, that's a hard one. There's a lot of good receivers. There really are. Yeah, there, there's a lot of good receivers, but ooh, dang, who is their quarterback? I forgot who's their quarterback. Who? What team? Uh, the Raiders. Jimmy Garoppolo. Oh yeah, I forgot. It's, it's Jimmy G. Because I was about to say uh, Demonte Adams, but they those two might be clicking. Very oh, good. Devontae. He's gonna get his. Yeah, he's 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 gonna get his. I'm gonna say Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy is my number, my number two. Do not draft, just because right. one it's Russell Wilson, um, and plus Jerry Judy has been hurt. And the one the games that he's supposed to, because trust me, I've had him on my fantasy team quite a few times now, and he has not showed up on nothing. Literally speaking from experience. Speaking from experience. 
Do not draft Jerry Judy. That, that's all I gotta I say. Wanna, through through past experience, tra- Jerry Judy, no. I'll transition. Do dr- draft Calvin Ridley. I have a different. I have a similar reason for that. Yes, a vengeance. He did was really good the year before with Atlanta. Mm-hmm. However, now you have a good quarterback. You had a washed up Matt Ryan before that. Now you have Trevor Lawrence. On top of motivation, I think he's a top three route runner in the league. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for Devante, sure. Devontae, Cooper Cup, and Calvin Ridley. So that's all I'll say about that. Vengeance, I think he's coming. He mm-hmm. is coming. Now, also draft Amara St. Brown from the Detroit Lions. I picked him up last year, yep. and I did not regret it. Yep. So now you add an extra year. I've seen a report that Jared Goff texted one of his coaches and said, Amara St. Brown, big year. So it seems like he's motivated. I would not put it past him, especially in a weak NFC. Yeah, because I remember you took my draft. You, you took him from me in that draft. I did. Now, here's some debate. I'm going to get hate for this. Do not draft. Don't okay. draft Cooper Cup. Yep. I was, I was literally it, about to say that as well. Honestly, I, I like Cooper Cup. He's one. I said, yep. said he's one of the best route runners. However, you look, he's playing in the NFL one, two, three, four, five, six seasons, only has two 1,000 yard years. Had injury history last year. The Rams oh, yeah. had horrible, to improve horrible their team. injury. Matt Stafford had an injury that almost cost him his career. He mm-hmm. gets hurt again. What are you going to do? Throw Stetson Bennett out there and expect him to win your games? There's just too many question marks with the Rams to draft Cooper Cup. True. I get it. He had a triple crown a couple of years ago, but beyond that, he's only had a thousand yard a year. That's it. One other. That's it. I wouldn't put too much stock in him. Now, also, do not draft DK Metcalf. And I say Ooh. that because Ooh, okay. he's been he had a, over barely over a thousand yards, only six touchdowns, and that was with Geno Smith surprising everyone. Mm-hmm. And that's not an assumption. What if he comes out and he doesn't again? So. I, this, again, too many question marks. DK Metcalf was on my team last year. He was and he was okay. And that was with Geno Smith lighting it up. So if he lights it up again, is DK Metcalf only going to be okay? Is that his right. peak? Not a top 10 receiver in the league for me. Slightly overhyped. Slightly. He's good. Overrated, though. Okay. His career, his career high in receptions he's never had over 90 he last year was best at 90 he's never had his best year was three years ago 1303 yards he's played four years two of them aren't even a thousand yard years two of them again less than eight touchdowns again good but eh. okay so there we have it now um i'm sure a lot of people have seen our uh our post, uh, we do apologize for lack of uh, short takes and whatnot these last 12 days. Um, been a difficult time yep. and family and whatnot. Um, my mother, my mother, Tina Murphy, did did pass away recently um, at 51 years old. Um, so I'm going to dedicate this podcast to her. Um, miss her greatly. Told myself I yep. wouldn't cry. Um, yep. Hated sports. She really did. But I'm going to share yep. a little bit of story with the world here. She never showed interest in any Super Bowl I've ever watched, ever, except one. I remember me and you were watching the game. Mm-hmm. This is a hard loss for JB as well. He's been a yep. family friend. Second, like second mother. mother. Um, and when the Steelers and Packers played in the Super Bowl, that was the only Super Bowl she actually peeked in and cared about. Um, outstanding mother. Without her, I can promise you I would not be sitting here right now. I really would not be. Mm-hmm. Obviously because she gave me life. But even beyond that, being my support and system, um, miss her greatly. This was unexpected. Um, um, love you, Mom. We love you. Love you. Um, we'll dedicate this podcast to you. Hope you're watching. Um, I, I know I know you are. So, again, I told myself I wouldn't cry. So I don't think I succeeded. <laughs> but, I'm tearing uh, up myself. So, so, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for the prayers um, around town, especially in my life. So, Good supporting system, so we'll be all right. Yep, it's so. it's we're we're gonna be we're gonna be all right. That's right. Um, so again, that's all we have for today's unbiased hard take. Um, JB, anything else? Um, nope, nothing really. It's all the same. Uh, we we miss you, mom. Um, really miss you greatly. 
Yes, um, I'm 27, and for those and, um, out there that have lost a parent, I'll say this. It truly is one of the most utterly loneliest feelings. Mm -hmm. um, however, you know you're not. I'm not the only person that's lost their mom. Yep. Ever. I, I'm not the last one that's ever going to do it either. Everyone loses their mom at some point. Mm -hmm. So I will say though, however, having no parents left is a hard thing. Um, but to those out there that have that same feeling as well, know you're not alone. Um, yep. And it does get better. So um, again, time. like, subscribe. Try right. like, subscribe, hit the bell. Like us on Facebook. Check out uh, the Sports Fact of the Day, and uh, that's all I got. Again, love you, Mom. I uh, hope you're watching, and uh, don't know how I'm gonna get through. I'm, all, I'm 27 years old. Don't know how I'm gonna live the rest of my life without you, but uh, that just means I'm loved, and and it, we're gonna make it happen. So, yep, love you, Mom. We love you. So Til next week. Till next week. See ya. See ya.